Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. So first off, we're going to kick things off by talking about the Beacon 20. This is the Blender Conference 2020 that should be taking place on the 30th of October 2020. But due to the global pandemic and, you know, safety, everyone wants to be alive and you want your developers to be as well. This is not going to be happening in a physical space. So what the guys at Blender Foundation are offering so that you can also be a full particular of this particular event is they are issuing a Beacon 20 comfort box. Now, if you want to get this comfort box, you can simply go over to the link, which I'm going to put in the description where you can get this. Now, the whole idea for this is to get that apart and they're trying to, you know, fuse that same feeling. Even though we are apart, we are still going to share several things together. Now, once you get the comfort box, you'll be able to find the Beacon 20 t-shirt. There's a straw waffle a postcard sticker and some more goodies that you're going to find in the box now this is a limited offer and you have only today which is the 10th of september to grab your own copy and if you want to get this you can simply go over to the link which i'm going to put in the description where you can find this you can choose the option for the t-shirt size that you want and just add to cart and you'll be able to also celebrate the blender conference with all of those goodies inside that box with this said let's talk about developments so we have some very interesting developments that has happened within the week and the very first one is blender 2.83.6 being released so this version is the lts version we did a video about that i'm going to put a link in the description where you can find it and yes we also talked about you know the pros and cons what you need to consider and with this particular release about 150 fixes has been done to blender 2.83 in total and the beautiful thing with the blender 2.83.6 is right now there is a brand new added feature which is the steam vr support so in case you're trying to get into vr and maybe you're just wondering if steam vr is also supported for blender you don't want to use a third party plugin like we've already talked about in previous video which i'm going to link in the description you can actually get blender 2.83.6 and take advantage of both the valve index the htc vive and work with Steam directly in Blender. To me, I think this is a very welcome development and it just makes a lot of sense to see that Blender is embracing the whole VR thing as they are not leaving anything to chance. Now let's talk about something that's actually very, very exciting. So the guys from Blender Foundation are now doing something really, really nice. It's called the Tuesday Team Talk. Now this is a weekly model meeting that happens on Tuesdays. It's more like a short meetings where they have to talk about the initial goal and also see if the developers are following the roadmap of what Blender 2.91 is supposed to be or you know what it's supposed to look like and at this time they are looking at you know discussing almost everything that has to do with Blender from user interface to grease pencil you know VFX and video node and physics animation and rigging all of that thing they're just discussing them and they did have a conversation about this last week and they've gone through to start discussing several things so if you take a look at the user interface if you take a look at the modeling you know the python and add-ons you see render and cycles you would just see a lot of things there are plans there are plans for following versions there are follow-up plans there are status plans you know developmental plans things that looks like features they want to add clarifications and i i kind of find this more refreshing i see it as a very good step in the right direction because at this point you have more clarity not just as the developer not just as you know uh the product manager but at the same time as the audience user as the as the final user you have more clarity to know what is actually happening within each stage of the production and you can also tell what the roadmap actually actually looks like so to me i find this as a worthy and a very welcome development so with this said let's dive over to blender 2.91 and take a look at a couple of features Features that are now available that you can try first off we're going to talk about something that a lot of people would love to see in blender and it's very interesting to see that guys from blender foundation have now implemented that and this has to do with context and filter search feature so what do i mean by that so if you take a look at what we have here we have blender 2.9 and actually i'm going to stack this side by side i will start off by talking about the search so if i go ahead and press f3 right here then you can now easily search for things by context now this this is not so solid as it stands it is still within its early working so don't expect everything to work so if i go ahead and type the word sub d or you know type the word sub d you can have you know your subdivision and you can have this one going for you really quick and really easy you can have that going right so if i also come over here and choose to do the same thing and press something like f3 and type the word sub d so let's go ahead and do that 
you can also see the same thing happening but then there are certain things that you would want to type over here and you don't really know how to spell them completely or maybe you just make a couple of spell check mistakes you might not be able to find them so if i am here in blender 2.9 and i press f3 for example and i type the word or let's say i go ahead and type something like f f r l u i d i don't see anything which is for flip fluid but if i come over here and i press f3 and type f f l u i d it kind of figures out that i'm trying to find the flip fluid and it simply just suggests that right over here now this doesn't only work you know for for example it doesn't only work for the viewport you can also get this to work for the shaders so if i select this and switch over from here and set this to shaders click right here switch this to shaders we have our shading thingy going here if i press f3 right over here and type a couple of words like skt for example doesn't think about anything that i need skt for if i do the same thing right here press uh, f3 for example and type the word skt thinks about it and makes a couple of suggestions and actually i'm going for the sky texture and we can have that sky texture there i can also type things like ems for example and it can also suggest a couple of words and you can see i can get the emission happening there and if i simply type things like ems around here we don't get to see anything another good example is also typing words like sss you see it doesn't show up anything and over here if i also do the same thing and type sss it kind of figures out all of things that has to do with sss and kind of suggests it over here so one lovely implementation for this is so that you can find things with their first letters more like you can find brushes and zbrush and stuff like that yep that is the main idea for this particular tool but for the most part it's it works but it doesn't really work as much as you can expect them to work when you're considering things like houdini and how houdini actually handles it if i also go ahead and type maybe something like ms for example it kind of gives me something like you know memory statistics stuff like that yep those things make sense but when you start thinking about it from the point of modifiers it is still in the works okay so it's still in the works and this is where houdini actually beats it so for example let's go ahead and say uh, we're looking for simple deform so if i press f3 on the keyboard and type sd we would not be able to find the simple deform i mean we have to scroll all the way down 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 before we even think of finding something that has to do with simple deform but in houdini you have these things at the tip of your fingers so if i get a, a cube or a box right here and just simply double click i can simply search for things like poly extrude and type the word pe and you can notice we have the poly extrude right there i can just simply click there and grab that poly extrude and if i would like this poly extrude to extrude from one to let's say four for example we can have that happening and i can just go in there and increase the distance and you can see that happening right there because this is the group which i want if i would like this to just happen within one to eight you know or maybe one to six we're also going to be able to have that so this is very procedural and we've already talked about a tool in blender that also gives you this procedural feeling now what i'm going for is we can also choose to get something like a sphere for example so if we like to scatter these based on points it is very easy to actually get this one going so instead of typing the whole copy to points like we have right here i can just type ctp and it understands that i'm going to copy to points and i know this is something that is definitely going to be coming over to blender very soon but up until this time i don't really think you know it has it all figured out but it's a very good step in the right direction to see that we now have something like this which is now in the works and hopefully this is going to get even way better so diving back over to blender let's also talk about some other cool nice features that are also coming and these ones has to do with sculpting so if i simply select the object click right here and switch over to the sculpt let's actually bring this one down bring this over to this side and drag this out you will literally notice that there is nothing new here now the reason why there's nothing new here is there is an implementation of a uh, button that you can now use within the experimental section within your preference and you can use this to hide any of the sculpting tools or any tool at all that exists with blender 2.9 that doesn't have an icon yet so if we simply click on edit and go over to preference let's bring that preference window right here you would notice within the experimental we have tools with missing icons turned off so if i simply click that and turn that on and close this and let's just wiggle around actually let's just wiggle around you would notice that blender is going to fill this thing in so i would also go back let's jump over to our object click right here add a subdivision let's punch this all the way up click over here and click on apply let's make this a shade smooth and go back to sculpt so most of the cool features that we have for blender 2.91 this week 
has to do with the face set so what i mean by that is if i simply press m on the keyboard and switch over to masking and just simply paint across so let's just do this quick painting i can now go over to this mask section generate new face sets for mask and once we do that we can now simply click on face set and we can extract the face set so if you're thinking about extracting stuff just the same way you can extract your poly groups in zbrush now you can do that let's simply go over to the mesh filter and smooth this a bit so i'm going to go over to the mesh filter set uh relax the face and have that there let's clear out this mask cool so some other cool features that you find here is we now have the box select so all of these things are more like quality of life feature that Pablo is working on and these include you know the sculpt face gesture tool set that we are actually looking at right now so we have this one which you can use to create face sets by using the box click and drag you can now use that and for the lasso as well there's also another tool that exists right here in my own humble suggestion i would suggest that these two are as one tool or maybe they can exist within this particular one so once you click on the face set within this tool section you should be able to toggle between creating these as boxes or creating these things as lasso i think that way we can have just one powerful face set button that actually does all of these things all right so with this here we also have some more we have the box trim so with the box trim you can now click drag and you can trim stuff and this is very interesting i like this so let's turn off our symmetry and do that one more time yep you can now do stuff like so and you can also use the lasso and also you know get this going so this is very interesting to see that we now have the box and also the lasso feature for trimming stuff and also for the face set and this is directly what you can get with zbrush so for those who might be thinking about okay how does this relate to zbrush this is how it relates so if you hold down shift and control in zbrush you can choose to pick the trim brush and with the trim brush you can literally you know trim edges and stuff like so yep you can actually do that and uh at the same time if you also hold down shift and control click over here you would also notice that we have a slice brush so the slice brush is the brush that you can also use to create polygroups so if i click on the slice rectangle and let's actually turn on polygroup I can click to create polygroup, click to create polygroup, and click to create polygroup. Now, something else that Blender does exactly the same way ZBrush does it is we select the trim brush at this point and use the trim rectangle, click and drag, click and drag to create, you know, or to trim stuff off. What we are getting is at a point like this, we are also getting brand new face set or, or brand new polygroup. So I'm also going to do the same thing here. Let's also get this one out of the way. And you notice we have new face set, new polygroup, new face set, new polygroup. And this is exactly what we have in Zebra. Select any of this and we cut through. For this example, you would also notice that we have a brand new face set right there. We have a brand new face set right over here. And we also have another brand new face set right over here. But these are not all the tools that you have for your face set. So let's just back up a bit and just go back, back, back up to a point like so. So if you also scroll all the way down, we have our default color filter. We've already talked about that. The masking by color is also something we've talked about. You now see that we have a brand new tool set called the edit face set. So if you simply select on the edit face set, you can choose to grow your face set or you can choose to shrink them. And this is very interesting because at this point, if you want to shrink your face sets, you can shrink them. And if you want to grow these things, you can also grow them. So this is going to be very useful for character creators and stuff like that. For those who like to create stuff, you might actually find this one very very useful so one more thing that you guys need to know before we go is within the job section the guys from blender foundation now have two job openings so previously we did announce that there were a couple of jobs open and it's good to see that there's a lot of response from that and today we are seeing that we have only two left so the developer community coordinator and also the operations manager are the jobs that are currently available at the blender foundation so if you're very excited about joining the blender foundation you want to contribute to the growth of blender then you should consider you know applying for this if your resume actually fits this so before we go let's do a quick add-on update so a few days ago i did post within the community that alberto fx is giving out his mass effect add-on for 50 percent off and this is going to be ending today which is september the 10th so if you want to get this tool you want to be able to scatter things 
things across your scene and you want to do this flawlessly uh, probably you may want to come through and take a look at this tool this tool is currently now supported for blender 2.9 and you can get it at 50 percent now it is set to ten dollars you know before it goes back to 20. and he's the same creator of the gribble tool just in case you haven't seen that this is also a very nice one and i think this is also updated for blender 2.9 in case you want to add some gribbles and probably you've also seen this tool that he created which is you know the quad wrap too and for those asking about the transportation add-on the transportation add-on has also been updated i think i talked about this last week but it has also been updated for blender 2.9 so in case you're looking for uh, an add-on that you can use to add some lovely trucks in your scene, an add-on that you can use to control the HDRI of your scene, an add-on that you can use to drop things or snap them to the floor, you want some customizable cars, things that's compatible with both EV and cycles, yep, you can get these and even more features that comes with this. I'm going to put a link to all of these and also to some very interesting add-ons that you might also find in the description. So tell me what you guys think about all of these things that we've talked about today in the comment section. Of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace